Okay, I'm Simon Jones. I uh, have guided for um, the cultural experience, uh, in particular First World War tours. I've been visiting the Western Front since I was about 18 years old, uh, since the 1980s. My favourite battlefield, I have to say, is the uh, the Western Front battlefield of the First World War. It's one that I've been visiting for, for many, many years, but it's one that I'm still learning about. I'm still finding uh, unexpected aspects to. The great thing about taking people to the Western Front is where you have a family connection. And when you're taking the descendants of people that, that might have fought there, you're getting their personal insight, you're getting the, um, the, the stories that only they know, that maybe they were passed down from um, grandfathers, etc. Often you're taking people to um, the graves of their relatives, graves perhaps that they might never have visited before. Military commander who I think has perhaps had a bad press, but who I have great admiration for, is General Montgomery. And people tend to think of him as a, obviously as a Second World War commander, but he really learnt uh, the art of war during the First World War. He learnt how to fight battles in massive uh, offensives, especially of 1918, which were uh, huge operations, many thousands, tens of thousands of men, thousands of, uh, of guns, hundreds of tanks. And this is where he learnt to really fight the all-arms battle. A huge set-piece attacks that he was then to put into operation at the Battle of El Alamein and the uh, Battle of Normandy, of course, uh, on, on D-Day. But he learned how to do this in the First World War. And that's why I um, have, I suppose, a kind of affection for Montgomery, even though, because of his own sort of personality, uh, he has, has got rather a bad press. His own sort of arrogance has overshadowed just how competent he was as a commander. The things that I enjoy most uh, about guiding for TCE are going to new places that I haven't been to before, and there are many places that I haven't been to yet, but also taking people to perhaps places that are familiar to me that are new to them. Uh, so that uh, especially if you were to go into the, especially if you go to the war cemeteries of the Western Front, for people that haven't been to these places before, you, you get that sense of, of, of awe often as you walk into one of these uh, cemeteries for the first time. And either the, 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 the enormous cemeteries with many thousands of graves or sometimes the out of the way little battlefield cemeteries with perhaps a hundred or less graves which have their own special distinctive character and are in their own way equally as moving. And it's when you are able to take people to these cemeteries, especially if they have perhaps a family connection, they might be visiting the grave of a, of a, of a relative. That's a, a, a tremendous, you get a tremendous sense of satisfaction from uh, enabling people to really follow in their family footsteps. One of the most memorable um, tours that I did was a uh, uh, tour to do with poetry and literature and um, I was able to take the son of a war artist to sites that his father had depicted in his pictures and the son happened to be an actor and the son was doing the readings for us so Paul the actor was reading his father, his father was called Harold uh, Williamson, he was reading his father's own letters at the uh, particular ba battlefield at Passchendaele where his father had fought. When you get that kind of uh, family connection, everything comes together and uh, it's a feeling that the whole group can share. I've been interested in military history since I was a small boy. I think a lot of small boys are interested in war. Uh, most of them grow out of it eventually, and military historians are the ones, I think, that, who have never grown out of it. My favourite 
historical film is actually the series Band of Brothers. And I think what sets that apart from others is that it was made with the cooperation of the veterans. And each episode begins with interviews from the veterans who are actually being depicted in the drama. And because they were there making sure that the, the filmmakers got it right, it has that uh, really powerful uh, authenticity. And it's, um, uh, it's a series that you can use on tour. You can show it in the coach and then you can visit the actual places where the, the, that are depicted uh, without any worries about um, uh, license being taken. You know that what is being depicted in the drama is very close to what actually happened. There are many uh, battlefields around the world that uh, I haven't yet visited. Uh, the Spanish uh, Peninsula Campaign, for example, I'd love to visit, or the Eastern Front, the Second World War. I think in terms of the First World War, the battle that I haven't, haven't visited yet is uh, the Salonika uh, and Greek battlefield, Macedonia, which is one that is um, still very little known, but is in beautiful countryside, a beautiful unspoilt battlefield and that's what I think as a tour guide you're looking for a battlefield that hasn't been built on it hasn't been developed you want somewhere that not many people go to where you can still find the the vestiges you can still find trenches there you can still get a, a really good idea of what it was like at the time as a uh, as a first world war historian the most obvious military blunder is the opening day of the Battle of the Somme where what was supposed to be the offensive to end the war where the Kitchener armies, the million strong army that had been raised and thousands of artillery shells were employed um, was a complete disaster. Where the British attack was a complete disaster and almost 20,000 soldiers were killed on the first day and other nearly 40,000 were, were wounded. And it's a, a disaster that is, even today, very difficult to understand. Um, but the tragedy is almost worse because there were such high expectations. And it's a cliche, but it really was a loss of innocence. The soldiers that were taking part in that attack thought that this attack was going to win the war. And instead, it was a, a complete disaster with most of the casualties even occurring within the first five minutes of the attack. So, uh, first of all, historians are constantly battling against the myth of the First World War that it was a campaign in which nothing changed, in which every attack was made in the same old way. What instead really happened in the First World War on the Western Front between 1914 and 1918 was a military revolution and modern warfare was invented and the way that battles were fought at the end of the First World War was completely unrecognisable to the way that they had been fought in 1914. And you have the development of, of modern artillery tactics and infantry integrated with that. You have aircraft, you have tanks, all fighting together. And this was a lesson that, in fact, wasn't learnt by Britain very well between the wars. Germany understood it better and developed it into what's loosely called Blitz, Blitzkrieg. Um, we had to learn to fight the all-arms battle. And in fact, during the Second World War, we never, I don't think, fully learnt that lesson, the lesson of the military revolution of the First World War. <laughs>